you know, it's, it's really, when you look at the game, um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but it just, it was just too many, way too many big plays. And um, on offense, you know, I, I, we, we had too many penalties and it got us off, uh, off schedule and we just didn't do a good job converting on third down. And, you know, you combine all these things to get together, that's, and then it gets out of the hand at the end because, you know, we're probably throwing the ball too much. Uh, over to the left, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. Brian, in the second half, there was a, a lot of penalties that put you guys back, but you made it kind of reasonable on fourth down, and CJ is visibly <laughs> pleading to go for it in that situation, given where the game was at that point. You know, why not go for it there? Well, I mean, we're always going to be aggressive, but at those times, I felt like it was the right thing to do was to punt. Uh, over here to the right, uh, uh, Nathan Baird, Cleveland.com. Brian, you changed your defensive coaching staff and brought Jim in in part because you were frustrated by the lack of in-game adjustments. Just your reaction to what you saw today where they were just repeatedly able to break off that many big plays. Big plays, yeah. Um, I'm going to have to obviously look and, and see you know, where all the breakdowns were, but it wasn't just one area. There was um, you know, a missed tackle on the, the first play, um, and then we got beat on a double move on the second play. Um, and then there was obviously some misfits in the run game on some other other plays, um, and there was an also the pass, um, you know, to the tight end. So uh, a few plays in the back end, and then a couple of the runs. So yeah, obviously the the first thing we need to do in games like this is play great defense, you know. And other than two plays in the first half, I felt like we did, but not in the second half. Uh, third row left, uh, Stephen Hellwagen, twenty four seven Sports. Yeah, Coach. Uh during the first half, you get the early lead, you put it in there uh, into the field twice, and uh, I think on both series there was a screen pass and then a running play on second and long, turn it over on downs, kick a field goal, may have left 10 points out there. Just do you feel like you missed the opportunity to grab control of the game at that point with a couple of the play calls there? Yeah, I think it was, you know, um, a combination of a lot of things. You know, uh, we spent a lot of time trying to, you know, uh, come up with things that we think you know, can get us into the end zone. And sometimes it's execution, sometimes, you know, it's other things. But no, I mean, um, I think those were opportunities for us to kind of jump ahead, certainly early on in the game. And um, it didn't happen. Uh, over to the right, Austin Ward, Rivals, 97.1. Ryan, you were really blunt last year. You just called what happened there a failure. Um, I'm sure you feel similar right now. Does this feel worse? Then it happened again, or, or what are your emotions right now as you evaluate this? You know, hard to um, hard to say right now because this is not the outcome that we all envisioned. Um, I thought we had a really good preparation. I thought uh, we were building towards uh, playing really well in this game, and, and we were fighting there in the first half. And I I felt you know really good going into the second half, and, and we just didn't execute well enough in the second half. So um, you know, I don't know how to answer that other than you know I thought we played hard. I thought we were fighting out there, but. In the end, we came up short. Second row left, Dan Hope, uh, 11 Warriors. Ryan, when this is your goal, and two years in a row, you guys come short of that goal, like where do you go from here? What what do you do to move forward from this? Well, we'll figure out what's next. You know, I don't know exactly what is next right now, but that's life at Ohio State. And um, you know, I certainly know what this game means to everybody. And um, and so, you know, when you lose, you know, you, it all comes back to me. I'm the head coach, and and that's uh, what probably hurts the most. Uh, over to the right, Adam Rittenberg, ESPN.com. Yeah, Ryan, this obviously was a play-in game for the Big Ten Championship. You guys aren't going to be going to that game, but do you feel like you, you still deserve con consideration for the playoff, or is that tough after the performance like today? Well, I, I mean, I thought we were in it, and uh, we were fighting there at the end. It obviously got out of control down the stretch, but, you know, it wasn't like, um, you know, we were outmatched in terms of, you know, uh, just overall play, I don't think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, as we get uh, to those decisions, you know, I think – you got to look at the body of work and, and what we've done, and um, you know we got a lot of good pieces on this team, and we came up short today. But but I think you know if we were able to get a shot in top four, we'd be a dangerous team. Uh, second row left, uh, Cameron Teague Robinson, the Athletic. Ryan, you mentioned the coverage breakdowns. So I'm curious, just as a play caller, when your offense is struggling with penalties and you're, you're getting behind schedule, and then defense goes on the field and you have a big break breakdown. How does that affect what your mindset is in terms of aggressiveness as a play caller? Yeah, I mean it. It all goes into the to you know the game. You, know, you, you um, when you feel like you're playing good defense, you know you feel like you're you're playing the ball control game, and, and you can go back and forth a little bit. When 
when you feel like you're giving up some ground and you feel like you got to catch up quickly and try to get it back a little bit faster, you know, because the game's getting away from you. So, um, you know, all those things go, in, go into your mind while you're in the game. Uh, over to the right, Bill Landis, uh, rivals. Ryan, when you're <clears throat> weighing decisions like that punt um, on fourth and five in the third quarter or the late field goal you kicked, how much do you take into consideration the message that sends to your team there and whether or not you felt like those decisions maybe sapped any of the aggressiveness out of your team? I think in games like that, you know, um, you, you, you have to play the field position game. And, you know, fourth and five and, you know, around midfield, uh, if it was fourth and three, fourth and two, you know, I think maybe you take a shot there. Uh, I didn't feel like we were desperate at that point. Um, and so I felt like that was the right thing to do. And, um, you know, I just feel like, you know, you're not in those situations if you're converting on third downs. And uh, we didn't do that today. Uh, over to the left, Doug LaMaurice, Cleveland.com. Ryan, how much do you feel like emotional and intangible things go into determining who wins this game? And how did you feel like your team handled that this week and today? Yeah, I, I, I thought we had a great week. I thought, like you said, emotionally we, were, we came into this thing swinging. Um, but we came up short. So I just got to get my mind wrapped around why that happened today and how in the end we didn't, we didn't finish this thing the right way. Uh, over over to the right, Dylan Davis, Delaware Gazette. You talk so much about competitive stamina and toughness, obviously, all year long. Um, it's been a big trademark for your team. At halftime, you still had a lead despite all the miscues and mistakes. Did you feel like that team was flat coming out of the second half? And is, I guess is that maybe the biggest disappointment is that you didn't respond in the second half? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I felt like, you know, we were we had a lot of juice coming out of the locker room, but we, we just didn't didn't do it. Um, but yeah, uh, you know we're winning, you know winning at halftime, and and felt like we were in a decent spot to go play. We got to, you know, the thing. My message to the team was we got to win the first six minutes of the third quarter right here, and then go from there. And, and that didn't happen. Uh, second row uh, aisle, Lori Schmidt, Columbus Dispatch. Coach, could you evaluate C.J. Stroud's performance today? I mean, his numbers were good, but uh, you look at the opposing quarterback, and his numbers may look even better. And maybe you needed an all-world effort today. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought he competed. I thought he played hard. All the way to the end, um, you know, made some good throws, and um, there's nobody who wanted to win more than C.J. Stroud today. Uh, uh, front row, uh, right, Tim May, Letterman Row. Thank you, thank you, Jerry. Uh, Ryan, I'm just wondering when, when you lose a game like this, but there were like four or five just haymaker plays that they hit. Uh, is, is it more stunning? What, what, what is that sense you have right now? And then also, they were basically not afraid to take some shots. I mean, uh, because everybody thought it would come down to J.J. McCarthy having to throw the ball to beat you guys, and bingo, you know? I mean, just, well, I don't know, how do you put this one in the file, I guess? Well, I mean, you got to obviously go back and, and, and evaluate before you just say something that's probably incorrect because everything's happening so fast. But um, certainly there were breakdowns in the back end. I mean, that was clear to see. Um, and, you know, when you do that in a big game, then, um, you know, you, you saw what happened. And the margin for error is so, so tiny. And all of a sudden, you know, the floodgates kind of open up and the game gets out of control. And um, it should have never happened. And also, what was the feedback you were getting from CJ, from, from plays y'all called and stuff? Sometimes it looked pretty good out there throwing the ball down the field, sometimes not. I mean, what was the feedback you were getting? And did they throw y'all throw some curveballs, I guess, uh, defensively? No, no, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, they, they you know, they're, they're a good defense, number one defense in the country statistically, and, and they did good, uh, you know, did a good job coming in with a, with a solid game plan. But um, there wasn't anything out there that we hadn't seen before. Um, and uh, so, you know, again, I, I think we, we just, in the end, didn't make enough plays. And final question, uh, front row, Joey Kaufman, Columbus Dispatch. Ryan, as far as the running backs go, Chip hadn't had much of a, a role carrying the ball for you in, until this game. What went into to using him as much as you did, and, and, and just how did you think he did? And, and also Mayan, uh, was he at full strength? Just yeah, well, not having uh, we didn't have Trey available, and then Mayan, um, you know, was coming off of, of his ankle, and um, you know he, he gave it a shot, but um, you know there were some runs in there early that you know he maybe um, wish he had back. I don't know, but uh, but then you know. Um, and we felt like Chip could go in there and give us a little bit of a shot, even though he hadn't played. You know, we had to play some depth. So Dallin got in there a couple times, and, and then and then Chip as well. So, um, you know, the good news is we had some pretty good depth there, but um, certainly why mine wasn't um, you know 100% today. Great, Coach. Thank you very much. All right, thanks, guys.